they're going after Steve King, of course, congressman from Iowa. They want to, um, well, they want to demonize him. Uh, I, I wouldn't have stated it exactly the way he did, but I understand his point. His point is that a society uh, that does not replenish its population through a rising birth rate, birth rate uh, will cease to exist. I mean, over time, that's just a mathematical fact. That's why, for instance, in, uh, in certain countries in Europe, uh, we're seeing declining birth rate uh, being replaced by new migrant birth rates, uh, very high birth rates among uh, Muslim immigrants, some from North Africa and to places like France, others uh, migrants into northern, uh, northern Europe. Uh, Sweden, uh, Denmark, uh, and Holland. And this was talked about uh, decades ago. This was addressed decades ago by people like Pat Buchanan in his book, Death of the West, as the uh, belief and uh, oh, I think the, as the church declined in Europe and with the rise of contraception and uh, cultural antagonism toward uh, marriage, uh, you know, abortion rates, children became less convenient. And when children beca become uh, less prevalent, uh, easily discarded, well, I mean, the population will perhaps be replaced by other factors or other another influx. In this case, uh, you saw it in the United States with the migrant population, the illegal immigrant population, having uh, disproportionately larger families in many localities than uh, native born, the native born non uh, Central American Mexican immigrant populations. And the question is, what kind of society do you want to be? It's not that it's not great for people to have kids who come to this country legally. I think it's fa fantastic. The more, the merrier. I'm all in favor of that. But if you love your country and you love the culture and the history of your country, uh, then you have to ask yourself, well, how do you maintain it? You have to maintain your population first. Again, that's just common sense. I think that's what he was getting at. Again, they went crazy on him. Uh, it wasn't just a criticism from some of the cable uh, cable folks either. They were using this. They were using this to try to, of course, get at Donald Trump and so forth. But uh, you know, Steve King comes out and says, this is about maintaining the culture. And you got to maintain the culture through population. What do you think about this? 855-40-LAURA. You've got to keep your birth rate up and that you need to teach your children your values. And in doing so, then you can grow your population and you can strengthen your culture. You can strengthen your way of life. And that's not happening in any of the Western European countries. France comes the closest to having a birth rate that's a replacement rate. But it's a clear message that we need to get our birth rates up or Europe will be entirely transformed within a half a century or a little more. 855-40-LAURA. Oh, and they slammed him. Oh, one after the other came out yesterday slamming Steve King for making these comments. Well, there, see, a lot of these people are happy if the American way of life and the American culture go down, goes down the tubes. They're happy. They don't, they don't want it well, to survive. I disagree with that statement. I, I haven't seen the context, but I disagree. That we're a melting pot. Look, my family's here because the potatoes stopped growing in Ireland. It, this is what's beautiful about American, the American idea. We're a melting pot where people come from all walks of life all around the world to seek freedom, to seek a better life. The American idea is this beautiful idea that, that is there for everyone, which is that your condition, your birth doesn't determine the outcome of your life. And so I really do believe in the American system of, of our values, our principles, and the melting pot that it has produced. Okay, we get it. These sound bites are too long. Uh, the melting pot, we get it. He said it the first time. Yeah, we, uh, that's the ideal, to be a melting pot. Here's the problem. Washington Times wrote this piece in 2015. I'll read it from my screen. Mexican Central American immigrants lag behind at assimilating into U.S. culture. Now, immigrants overall, and we're including legal immigrants, do rather well at assimilating into the United States, but there are major differences, particularly for poor Mexican and Central American immigrants, and they're focusing on illegal immigrants, whose families lag behind the kind of integration the U.S. has prided itself on for decades. 
according to the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine, and a report that was issued uh, in September, September 20th, 2015. Immigrants are, are healthier than native-born, have longer life expectancies, lower crime rates, the academics concluded. However, they were focusing again on, they were lumping everyone together, the legal and the illegal. But Mexicans and Central Americans average less than 10 years of schooling, and while their children end up better off than their parents, they still remain behind the native-born, suggesting a persistent problem with assimilation. Black immigrants' children also have problems integrating, the report said, citing lower work employment and a troubling rise in poverty levels compared to their parents. Most immigrants who also are also learning English as about the same rate as previous waves, but that's not true for Sp- Spanish-speaking migrants who appear to be acquiring English and losing Spanish more slowly than other immigrant groups, the academic said. And one in 11 students in primary and secondary schooling is, is at the same time getting remedial English help. Um, yeah, immigrants lag behind other countries, uh, duh, 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 earning citizenship. Um, yeah, this uh, the assimilation. Well, you you all see it in your in your various communities. The melting pot that we've prided ourselves on being. Um, it, it's it's critical. It's critical to to ensure that civic pride and patriotism is instilled among all new immigrant populations. And Donald Trump actually address this yesterday where when he said we want people to come here and love this country we want them to come here and and love it and learn to love this country he was addressing the the travel ban and the the uh, visa uh, temporary visa ban we want them to be here loving america how is that ever controversial so he made that point again but the categories of assimilation that are important okay linguistic assimilation uh, the majority of the, uh, you know, the immigrants coming into the country, are they able to be conversant in the English language soon enough compared to past generations? Well, I think past generations didn't have all these crutches like we have today with Univision and Telemundo. And, you know, it seems like half of the cable offerings that I have are in Spanish. Some are even in Chinese. Do you notice that? So people have the ability to watch on, and on also online and, and, and so forth. So you do have that crutch. I'm not saying even if I I'm putting myself in this position, if I went to another country now, I didn't know the language. I'd probably watch CNN to get, you know, the news that I could get. I mean, it's just it, that's human nature. You'll go back to your native language if it's there versus versus total immersion when you have to learn. Uh, we found out in South Florida, of course, that there's dual English Spanish, uh, and almost, you know, every major school today, meaning the kids who are even English speakers are learning in Spanish, uh, on many, on many occasions. Uh, 85540 Laura. Uh, emotional assimilation and patriotism. Immigrants may have problems assimilating emotionally with their new country, um, because their loyalties are divided between the two countries. Well, what, what is what is this from, Drew? Drew handed this to me. What is this? What's that? What is this from? Oh, it's a Reuters piece. I just thought it was two excellent points on how it's hard for yeah. them to assimilate, how they care more about their own culture from you know from their country they come from than to assimilate into the values that we have okay, in America. Yeah, I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't labeled, so I didn't know where that came from. Um, okay, there is a piece, by the way, which which is I, I read this morning, but I didn't think about it much about it until I started uh, hearing the criticism of Steve King. Um, but listen to this. This is a uh, this is a piece in USA Today, and the title, of course, is always going to be more. Oh, it's going to be more forgiving and more sympathetic toward the Muslim point of view, which is usually the case in the mainstream media. Muslims fear antagonism toward Islam in Holland. Muslims fear antagon- antagonism toward Islam in Holland. Anti-immigration candidates in Europe vow big changes. Now, you'll never see a title where uh, native-born, um, you know, native-born Europeans fear Islamic antagonism toward freedom, toward pluralistic values, toward 
hey, for Europe, egalitarianism. You're not going to see those titles, but it's always, well, they fear antagonism toward Islam. Okay? But even in this piece, uh, there's some interesting nuggets, which kind of cut against the framing of the, of the article. So Holland's Muslim po- uh, community, and by the way, they're, they're writing about this because of, of Gert Wilders, uh, who is, um, you know, I think he's likely to become the next prime minister uh, of Holland. And he is obviously extremely critical of what migration, Muslim migration, has done uh, to uh, the Netherlands. And he is, you know, he's very, very concerned about how this will all go down. And he said, and check this out, he said he's confident Holland's democratic constitution, this is this uh, Islamic Ahmad El Gabagadi, an imam at a big mosque in the, at The Hague, says it's discouraging to be disparaged by politicians such as Wilder's. He said he's confident that Holland's democratic constitution would safeguard religious freedoms, even if Wilder's party comes in first. The multi-party system could still exclude him from taking part in a new government. Other members of Holland's Muslim community, which makes up 6% of the country's population, said they feel unease about the political climate and society known for its liberal views. Uh, 40% of Dutch nationals of Antillian Moroccan, Surinamese, and Turkish origin said they don't feel at home in the country, according to the recent survey by the Netherlands Institute for Social Research. It's a government agency. Uh, Now, they quote this guy, Arzu Aslan, a teacher and activist from Amsterdam who is of Turkish-Kurdish descent. Because when I think of of Amsterdam, I think of Islam, right? So of Turkish-Kurdish descent. He said, my mother's my mother always said to me, you are not Dutch. This was partly because as a Turkish Muslim teenager, my family wanted me wanted to make me comfortable with my identity. They said to me, you already have an identity, a religion and an ethnicity. You are just a citizen of the Netherlands. You have a Dutch passport, but that's it. I think a lot of people still believe that. Now, he's trying to make the cases, well, look, now now as a grown-up, I'm very thankful, he says, that they did this because I see a lot of people who have the idea that if you were born here and, and you just cooperate and study and work and don't take benefits from the state and don't do criminal things, then you're just like the Dutch people, but it's not true. You will never be one of them. Well, about a fifth of Holland's 17 million people have a foreign background. And Islam is the second largest religion after Christianity. And the uh, USA Today say they, well, they suffer discrimination in jobs and education, according to... Well, you will never be hey guys, this is the first- Now, whose hey guys. fault is that? If hey that's guys. true, if there is this massive this is discrimination against I've people of this. Islamic descent or Muslim uh, folks who come into uh, uh, the Netherlands or who uh, were born there and ha- are Islamic. And if, they, if they're not considered Dutch, where did it start? Did it start with their refusing to assimilate into the country's culture and, and tradition, that they're more separatist in their lifestyle and in their beliefs? Or is it the fault of... You know, the government and the people of the Netherlands who want to maintain their culture. It's an interesting question. So the melting pot, I think they all probably want a melting pot, but that means you melt into what the society is. You don't remake the society in your own Islamic view of the world. The society doesn't bow down to you in your your religion. The society is what it is. And if you don't like it, don't go there. 855-40-Laura.